What's up, ladies and gents? Welcome to another video. Man, is this one a fun one. Very unique one here, as you probably expect if you know this Phosphoru guy. Uh, now, yesterday, for those that watched my daily videos, I mentioned that it would be a week until I brought you this one, but I actually decided let's dive into it because I've got so many, and it's just going to be a really fun week as I bring you some of these games, what Phosphoru's been doing recently. Now, um... Uh, we've got Phosphor here. Uh, again, just a slight introduction for anyone who maybe didn't see the earlier games. You absolutely should. There's a lot of context. But basically, he he likes to cook up some strategies. And uh, originally, it was the Bohemian Wagons, which then were eventually nerfed. Uh, but then I recently showed people what he's doing with Rams, hopping in and out of Rams with the Janissaries. Now, that is really cool. And it's really crazy how he's utilized that but there is actually a, a unit that you can make in the game, which is designed to make that whole hit and run thing a little bit easier. So we're going to get into that. We've got Phosphor playing as the Malians. This has been his thing. This has been his main for quite a bit here. And then we've got Survivalist, a player who is higher ranked, uh, around like 2150 ELO at the time of recording this. And Survivalist is playing as the Japanese. Um, the map here is Acclivity. And Acclivity, you've got the elevation around the outer ring, as well as this line of elevation through the middle. Uh, it's a bit interesting, because obviously hills between player bases are really important in Age of Empires, but the hill doesn't really offer too much. I mean, for the deer, it clearly offers a place to stand and graze on nothingness. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's just no, like, resources there, right? There's no stone or no gold. So I always find it interesting um, to, to see this map. I actually quite like that, right? Because sometimes hills can be too strong if it has everything as well but anyways uh not really here to talk about hills uh but how the map's situated you've got two gold to work with near your town center you've got the stone but not a lot of it actually and then the most of the resources are going to be spread around the outside well obviously the bigger wood lines are going to be more towards the middle so that's kind of the base, basic breakdown of the map uh this map does play out similarly similar similarly sheesh to uh, like maps like Arabia, you know, standard land maps. There's no water element, which could hurt the Japanese, for example. Um, and we'll see some pretty funky stuff here. So I do not know if survivalists know, knew Phosphor's reputation at this point in time. I know he certainly does now. Um, but I, I imagine he did. Uh, they play around the same time. Survivalist plays quite a few games. I know Phosphor is playing quite a few. So apologies for not doing my homework. But I know survivalist very well, and, and he probably knew... This guy's going to go for some funky stuff. So, using the Japanese flexibility, Survivalist is trying something special here. So, he's gone barracks before the lumber camp because the lumber camps actually ends up being quite cheap. And he's trying to get some damage in nice and early here. Now, Phosphoru always goes fast castle. So, he designs his base in a way where he can't be damaged by feudal age pressure all that easily. But he's not really used to dark age pressure. And so, at this point in time, Phosphoru doesn't have loom. So it's a really solid strat, really good thinking here from uh, from Survivalist. And immediately Phosphor sees this, and Phosphor is going to try and fight this off. And it's certainly not something he's used to. You know, the deer still hasn't been pushed in yet. Three villagers with no loom technically could fight this off, but it's still awkward. It's still messy. It's still not an enjoyable time. And sometimes, guys, this is just simply meant to delay and distract your opponent. It's not necessarily meant to get any kills. Now, I do need to point out that the uh, behind this, Survivalist, as he kills a villager, which he will finally be very happy about, um, he did not have the wood for a house. So actually losing that militia helped him, <laughs> uh, funnily enough, because otherwise he couldn't create this next villager. It does end up losing the scout, which means he could do without a house for a little bit longer. But like Survivalist builds here, as cool as the whole militia thing is, He's down the sheep here. He's down the sheep here. And uh, now he has made a militia to find his sheep. And, well, this is the downside of not scouting your base um, properly. Which is a bit weird, because I swear he must have pushed in some deer, too. Not actually sure. Did Survivalist shoot his boar with his TC? Hold on a second. There's one boar. Okay. And then that boar he's eating. Yeah, he just straight up just didn't find his food. And then he spent the militia. Okay, so things got crazy for survivalists. Good to know. Good to know. Not uh, not, not that uncommon for survivalists to <laughs> encounter crazy situations. But, you know, sometimes when the going gets rough, when the going gets messy, you got to make it messy for your opponent too. And so I think he senses 
I'm already going to be quite delayed in the Dark Age. My opponent's probably going for Fast Castle anyways. So let's try this again. So pretty wild stuff here. Like, the early barracks in the lumber camp you wouldn't see without the Japanese. Uh, the mill's cheap too. The mining camp's cheap too. So he's got all three of those buildings, and he's utilizing the barracks. Round two. So, you know, good old Phosphoru here, probably looking for some extra deer uh, to push in or something. He's on stone. And he does get loom, which he's been doing now because people are aggressive against him. I remember in the early episodes I talked about. But yeah, Phosphoru's just, he's fast castling over here. So Phosphoru wants to push in the deer. I'm running out of food underneath the TC himself. And this is kind of wild. Survivalist can see this. But it's choosing not to stop it. So you can see the deer moving. It goes swoops right into the wood line. And Phosphor reacts right away. Credit to him. But Survivalist is blocking like a madman. And it's going to be a villager kill. Really nice stuff. So now Survivalist has more villagers. And quite an efficient eco. The start was brutal. But quite an efficient eco back at home. Clicks up to Feudal Age. So advantage to Survivalist. And these are still three militia. So this is, this is something that will probably... Get under your skin as a viewer. Survivalist is like, I'm going to attack you. No, I'm not. I'm going to attack you. Just kidding. No, I'm not. I'm going to attack you. No, I'm not. And then right when the guy doesn't think you're going to attack him, guess what? You're actually going to attack him. <laughs> I love this. This is just like back in the days of like 300 ping. Now the response time is really high. Like this was so much more annoying. And uh, yeah, it's just like it, it is idle time. It is time. The villagers not collecting resources. And it is tough for... A player in Phosphorus' position to do things as efficiently. Like right there, pushing in the deer. Deer went back again. And that was round two for that deer, actually. So, um, again, discussing this like you probably know Phosphorus at this point, right? You, you, you've probably heard of Phosphorus more than anyone else over the past month or two for me. And uh, we've got Market Blacksmith. He does not produce any more vills. This is part of the plan. And he wants a castle. Every single strategy from this guy revolves around having a castle now in feudal age japanese infantry attacks faster so actually if there was ever a time to go in and fight this would be it and we've got more militia looping in on the right hand side from survivalist he's also going to find some geese and survivalist is not finished here with the pressure so it's kind of wild right phosphorus on the way to castle age survivalist though he's not even close but he's making vills he's making farms he's making eco and the idea is Phosphorus strategy is designed around not having a lot of eco, but making sure whatever units are made are incredibly strong. And now it's Japanese man at arms. And this is quite bad for old Phosphor here because Phosphor needs stone for a castle. And Phosphor now lost the scout. And this is Phosphor's base right now. Third villager goes down in the game. Nice job from Survivalist. So we've got uh, 20 villagers. They're all right here. A uh, couple farmers and the rest lumberjacks. And Phosphoru is sadly 200 stone away from a castle. This has just been perfect for survivalists, and he knows it. He's even going for forging for extra attack on these things. I don't know where his extra one is. Okay, he just forgot this one back here. That's that's kind of funny. Um, again, you know, farms. No eco upgrades yet for survivalists, but as I say that, he's going to get one. And Phosphoru needs to get a castle. Without a castle, there will be problems. So Phosphoru, lost in the mining camp, is going to walk back out here to get some stone. And is now walking out here to get gold. Now, way back when, maybe Hardy can just edit it in. And my fir the first time I played Phosphoru, when he was doing the Sicilian thing, I destroyed his market. And it really made life awkward for him. So Survivalist is funny. Months later now... We encounter a similar situation. Phosphor just walking back and forth to the stone. Bought 100 and now needs 45 more. But Survivalist attacking the blacksmith. I mean, I really think attacking the market would be huge here. In theory, the Malian market's a bit cheaper because all their wood buildings are cheaper. But yeah. I love the fact he's destroying buildings though. And like, it's really tricky when you're in Survivalist shoes because you're like, where is he? He has nothing. The way Survivalist, the front of Survivalist base looks, it looks like a AI encampment. Anyways, he's like, he's not here. Okay, there's a villager finally. Looking around, and then he's going to see the castle, and he's like, oh! Okay, my opponent's going to have Gebetto. Now, Gebetto 
is quite a strong unit against infantry. In fact, it's pretty good against everything, but it costs food and it costs gold. So you do need some food income. First Cabeto is going to be on the way. And Phosphoru only plays this way pretty much and, and will recognize, which I think is quite smart, that it would be a mistake to deal with this right away. You, this is You've limited time to hit your opponent before they are in the next stage. Now I'm going to stay on Phosphoru's point of view here because I think it's important to show you kind of what he sees. Remember, he lost his scout. These two Gabetto, it's 80 HP, but 20 attack combined, right? Because 10 attack for each, and they go forward. But Survivalist knows, and that's something Survivalist does very well. He's, he's not the most aggressive player, which would actually shock you based on how he played this. But overall, he doesn't always have the best of timings with his attacks, but he's really good at staying alive. So this type of strategy... It's really tricky against a player like him. But he, the tower's dropped, and there's Gabetto just stand right underneath the tower. And just like that, we have villagers killed. So that's not too bad. Now, Survivalist has collected 2,000 more resources. And by the way, I need to show this to you. The next Gabetto went over here to take out the man-at-arms. So Survivalist runs away. And we now have a siege workshop being built from Phosphor. Now, another thing about Survivalist... Is, so it's kind of funny. I, I don't know... I had a video where survivalist siege towered villagers to build a castle on arena once and uh, the castle couldn't be built and he was trapped and it was kind of bad. But survivalist is is probably the player, like if you were to say, tell me one thing about survivalist T90, I would say Byzantines and Shudder because they used to just pick Byzantines and the games would go late and I played one too many against you survivalist is painful. But the other thing is siege tower. And so, like, he understands the way of the Siege Tower. And he's been one of the guys who kind of uses that with, like, Axemen and Gabetto, actually. So, these Gabetto, the good micro here so far from Phosphor, but 21 villagers against 33. And Phosphor has to be careful not to lose these Gabetto. So, you can kind of see how it works in some ways, right? Because the aggression is so well-timed. And Survivalist did a lot of damage, but he is still alive. He dropped the towers. Life is awkward, but he is still in this game. But, and, but he's completely surrounded right now. And now we have a ram on the way for Phosphor to try and go for the eco. Now, I love how Survivalist came back here to attack this market. This is really smart. But, I mean, one Gabetto comes over here, and then suddenly those things are pushed away. This is crazy damage. Crazy damage against a higher-ranked player. And good old Phosphoru, you can fit six in a ram now, loads up three, and it's going to load up the next three into that ram. <laughs> so funny, man. And so, I, I something you're going to see in this game is, is how Phosphoru really uses the tankiness of the ram and the eject and garrison hotkey. So it's just one ram, right? So normally villagers will go in after this. Well, go ahead. Bam. Okay, back into the, back into the ram we go. Bam. 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 Ram is dead. Now Gabetto need to run away. And, uh, well, you know, villagers died. There was a whole lot of bam. But still two Gabetto died, and we have Survivalist alive. So, Survivalist did end up taking out the market, which is very nice. Um, Rephosphor just made a new one underneath the castle. Survivalist needs to survive right now. And so this is against any type of, like, really all-in strategy where they have you surrounded. This is one of the best things you could do. Is just get out of here. Build a new TC. Now, I think Phosphoru, he must have, he must sense this because he doesn't see Vils. And maybe he can't hit here. He's looking around. He didn't see anything on the gold back here. He's still looking. He's like, where is he? He's in the next age. And Survivalist actually came in here and killed two more villagers. The lumber camp was also deleted by Phosphoru. And Phosphoru just says, screw that, man. I'm just going to build everything underneath the castle. Phosphor really looking around for damage, but the double towers made it difficult. You can't sit under them anymore. I think technically you could actually sit there and be underneath both towers, but that would be awkward. Anyways, here it is. Siege tower's on the way. So, the, the ram strat he did with the Turks was really fun and all, but the siege tower is kind of designed for the whole transportation method, and it is really interesting a niche unit but you can fit 10 units inside okay so we're gonna see him loaded up here it rolls much faster than a ram 
It has more HP than a ram, more more pierce armor than a ram, to my knowledge. And you can just kind of roll these things underneath arrow fire all the time and do the same thing, only because of the speed, the villagers can't get in and attack it like the ram. So, Siege Tower rolls in. Siege Tower does more than enough to justify the existence at this point. Now, 20 villagers against 33. Survivalist needs to survive, and Survivalist is going to make Siege. Which, again, against a ram, really good move. Against the Siege Tower, a little bit more complicated. But yeah, look at the Pierce Armor. So it's 100 Pierce Armor, so you're not doing... You're doing one damage a hit with anything against the Siege Tower. So yeah, units hop out, units attack. Now, here's what's cool, guys. And we're going to have more obvious examples of this, but I want you to pay attention to the positioning of the tower because the, the tower positioning is really critical when it comes to tanking for um, tanking for the Gabetto. I think when you eject them out of the tower, they all they come out in like a circle around the tower sometimes. But it may depend. And Siege Tower goes zoom, right through. How are you supposed to hit that? Pops out, bam, and it goes down. And now that just runs away again. Poor Survivalist has no gold, right? He cannot take gold at the moment. He's surrounded. He does have a market, so he could sell some stone maybe to make more siege. But he is kind of at the mercy here of Phosphor, who's just going to make more and more siege right now and is just, again, zooming around. Like, this is top couple hundred in the world we're looking at. This isn't a Loey the Legend game. I know it might kind of feel like it, but this is actually really cutthroat timings and really aggressive stuff. And, like, again, Survivalist may be thinking maybe he can bank up the stone to build, to go for guard tower defense, and he's going to drop a tower here. So, guard tower with Bodkin Arrow normally locks down a siege push. Um, the We don't see it that frequently, so I actually don't know if it's the same rule of thumb, but, like, two, three years ago, there's been no balance changes to it, so it's probably the same. One guard tower is enough against three, two, or one Mangano. Um, so, it's really strong against the siege push. Look at this villager repairing the tower to get more HP. So survival is hopping in and out of his towers to try and complete this. It's so awkward. These are attack rounds. And there we go. Finally, the tower completes. But no bod canero could be a problem. Now watch this. Look where the siege tower goes. You see what's happening here? He's actually blocking the arrow fire with the siege tower there. If you don't believe me, just keep an eye out. So TC is going to go down for poor survivalist. And survive. <laughs> survivalist is like he's kind of screwed <laughs> there's like i think what you could hope for is you hope for one manganel to clear up like three and then you hope for escaping in some way right if you can get away um like these villagers can be wooden a couple farm villagers you can get these villagers to another resource like another tc on a gold you could be in a better spot so he's in full evacuation mode yeah, you see how the tower goes in front? The siege tower is actually taking the damage. And you can do this. Like, there's no way if that siege tower is in front of the intended target that you can actually hit the target behind. I tested this. If you were to click behind the siege tower, doesn't matter. The siege tower is in front of it. The siege tower is still blocking the projectile. We're going to see another example here. So look at the HP on the siege tower, right? Siege tower is getting hit. Manganel's the target, but the siege tower is blocking it. I've never seen anything like this before. Be intentional. Look, he moves in front of the Mangonel. It's actually brilliant. I mean, it's not perfect, right? Because there, there's, you know, he's got to back it up now. But like, this is this is crazy, right? There, he's got to move it a little bit more. Survivalist is switching targets, and look how many times the siege tower is getting hit instead of the siege. And like now, Bod Canero is even, and this is where those towers are supposed to shred. You can't hit it. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. And I actually think this, in some ways, could have like, more practical applications. Okay, there he wasn't able to save it. But I'm I'm thinking in, not even in low eco games, like um, we see here. But in games, in late game, when we have Treb Wars and Castles and Arbalest, like 100 Pierce Armor, it might actually be worth it to send Siege Towers as a meat shield. Like, even, even instead of a ramp, right? Because rams are so so slow compared to it. Anyways, I was like... I, I obviously watched this, like, at some point this week. And I just couldn't wait to show this to you. And I was going to wait 
a week to show you and then said no the people have to see it now because that aspect of it's crazy and now he's just repairing away in his tower now like res collected still so much higher for survivalist survivalist has eco over here he's producing more bills survivalist has eco over here he's producing more bills so survivalist is in this game still has a couple of man at arms over here and eventually phosphor might run out of this gold i actually remember casting a game before where he did run out of this gold and he needed to find another one and then everything wouldn't be underneath this castle but siege workshop is going to be taken down the resources destroyed has got to be insane here for phosphor and he knows about this um over here he has a couple cabeto is really smart from survivalist though this keeps him alive built the tc in a very sneaky position so this is guard tower and tc and he just goes right underneath all of it and right back into the tower <laughs> it's crazy and so phosphorus said he said i seriously think the siege tower needs a nerf it was an actual statement and i can understand it like no pro no one out there is going to be saying siege towers are too strong because no one makes a freaking siege tower except this guy and maybe that'll change maybe we're, we're seeing something new here did that wolf just get a kill i think it did okay so here we go again now this this is much better position to defend uh now compared to before if you're a survivalist right because before he didn't have a lot of eco around okay so he's got guard tower he's gonna have ballistics which helps with hitting moving targets which it can really help with gabetto run by for example here we go so like i said typically a double guard tower with bodkin is going to defend from this we have villagers come in to repair the tower and we obviously know the reasoning that the tower is being repaired you better loop into the back must suck to be survivalist right now seriously and now he can like barely take wood back here is still over here right is still moving around and still has more villagers this is survivalist we're talking about the man at arms are scouting like survivalist is he could expand all around this freaking map believe me he loves to do that okay so it's kind of hard for me to show you but i'm going to show the mangonels again and this is even more clear just in the off chance you didn't realize it before the siege tower is standing in front and survivalist is obviously going to target different siege now the ram it doesn't work the same way i think because the ram is smaller but you see how he moved the ram so it's a bit closer it, it's fascinating stuff and now of course survivalist is like oh i'll just hop out and then the gabetto hop out of the tower <laughs> this is brilliant it's really smart and the gg's called and the game's over like that's just crazy that is just so crazy survivalist did so much damage he killed a lot of villagers i think he did struggle in some way to know what to make against the gabetto i think the lack of archery ranges was concerning maybe some range units could have been good but i mean the siege was a nice idea in defense the gabetto sniped that but honestly whether or not this game was really that close or i, I kind of felt a bit stompy i suppose because phosphor was killing everything but the coolest thing about this is not the use of the siege tower which is already he's shown he can do this with ramps and siege towers that's cool is actually the fact that he's using the siege tower to block projectiles which again might actually have practical applications in other aspects of the game so please give me your thoughts on this one um i thought it was a crazy game and again this guy's 2k plus he's doing this all the time with malians and i don't know if it'll be tomorrow's upload uh, another upload coming up soon i'm just gonna tell you someone got sick of him doing this okay and they decided to go for their own type of yolo strategy in a dark age you can maybe guess in the comments what that yolo strategy might be i'm sure some of you guys could probably get it but uh yeah anyways it's just it's gonna be some fun stuff coming uh phosphor didn't collect near as much wooden food obviously um he collected mainly gold and uh if he needed food he just bought it like all this stuff is brought to you by the market and also really good micro and really good value with his fights it was a fun one guys um videos every day uh, as you'll all probably know at this point we've got hidden cup five coming main event february 25th through march 3rd if you guys can make that either here on twitch or youtube it would mean the world to me will be the biggest event i've ever run also a little side note on that we also do have a live viewing party in the usa i know 
30% of you watching this are from the U.S. It'll be in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You see the third place match, the grand final. Your ticket includes food, drink, alcohol, and then also the chance to meet me at the end. After the big reveal, I'll be driving over and uh, I'll get to meet you guys, sign some autographs, and and just thank you all for being there. So, uh, yeah, check that out. Tickets are only on sale for that for another week or two. Obviously, everybody else who is interested in watching the event uh, means a lot. And trust me, it will be worth it. Thank you, guys. See you tomorrow.